Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to Mornings with 60 and Me. Today is Sunday, it is December the 4th. So I hope you're having a great weekend so far. It's, um, it's the first weekend in December and um, you know it's getting quite festive around here and um, people are getting ready for the holidays. Um, and I actually really love December. I love the month of December. You know, it's a time to like look back on the year, you know, what you've accomplished, all the great things you've done and get excited about the future. You know, what's coming in the next year and um, just to, to do the planning, you know, the planning for your life, for what's important to you. And I think it's also a great time, of course, to get together with your family, um, connect with friends, either online or in person that you, know, you haven't maybe uh, connected with all year. And also to thank the people that make your life easy, you know, that, that do things to make your life easier and happier. Um, you know, people in the shops that you see every day, you know, just take a moment to thank them. And also the, the, the people like the guys that collect the garbage or the people that, you know, do little um, tasks around the house that you need help with. People that just add, enrich your life. You know, this is a great month to remember them and just you know, make them feel special. And, you know, in my opinion, to put kindness first. <laughs> That's uh, for me my North Star and um, perhaps it is for you too. Just to be kind, be a good person. And uh, this gives us an opportunity in December to do that. So um, hope that you're doing well. I, I actually have got a great cup of tea this morning. I've got um, uh, spice, um, sweet chai. And it's one of those uh, mysterious teas that's got all kinds of, um, well, it's a black tea, but it's got in it cardamom, nutmeg, uh, you know, cinnamon, all kinds of interesting spices that are good for you and perfect, you know, for a cool kind of winter's morning. But I hope you've got a cup of tea or coffee and uh, let's sit down and uh, talk about something today that I, I hope you find interesting and challenging. That's, that's what I want today. I often go through my house looking for, you know, I have a small place and I, I, but I still like to keep possessions to a minimum. You know, try to only have things in my house. Uh, I think it was William Morris who said, only have things in your house that you think are beautiful or useful. So now every, every week I usually take a chance, an opportunity to look at my, my closet and what have I got there that I could um, share or, or find a new home for. And so we have an article on 60 and Me by Penelope Whiteley. Penelope is um, a fashion consultant. She's very, uh, very sensitive and, and good, especially with older women. She's in our demographic. And she uh, wrote an article about um, re sort of reinventing your fashion style by downsizing and giving yourself a, make, a, war, um, a wardrobe makeover. And I wanted to just go through some of the suggestions she makes. Maybe they'll be useful to you. Um, I will start by saying that uh, her ideas are hers and everyone's got a point of view about this topic. So take it with a light heart and um, you know the suggestions are just there you, for you to consider. But you know, as we go along, if you've got thoughts or ideas, just leave a comment. You know, just go ahead and, and put, a, put a comment in the section below and we'll just you know, we'll take everyone's comments and as, as good advice. So anyway, the first thing that she says, of course, is that, you know, if you've got clothes that you haven't worn for 10 years or that, you know, fit you when you were 10 pounds lighter or maybe 10 pounds young, or so 10 years younger, you know, maybe it's a time to take a, a harder look at what's in your wardrobe and, you know, whether it really reflects who you are anymore. So the first thing she says, and I know people don't all agree with this strategy, but I, I, I've done it. I think it works. And that's to turn everything, put, put everything you, you can on hangers and put the hangers in the wardrobe facing backwards. And then as throughout the month, as you wear your clothes, just as you wear on the hanger, turn the hanger around. So it's facing the other direction. And that way, of course, you can see what you've worn and what you haven't worn. So um, that's a great first step. So do that. And then by the end of the month, just take a look at what's not been worn. Now, I'm not saying then you have to do something to throw them all away, but it's, it's time to think, do I really want those items of clothes? So after you've done this, you'll find Penelope says up to 80% of your clothing has not been worn. Now, the truth is that some clothes are seasonal. And if you don't, um, you know, some people put all their summer clothes away and only have the winter clothes in the closet or vice versa. But if you're like me, I just put every, all my clothes uh, in one place. And I know that there are certain things that haven't turned around that I'm not going ever to wear in the summer or the, or the fall. So that's the first thing is just to determine what clothes you have that actually are ready to be put into one of five piles. Okay, so the first pile is to throw away. 
And of course, these are things that are too tight, too ugly, too old, or too just not you. <laughs> and put those in a, in a basket to throw away. And you know, if they're in good condition, you can uh, take them to a, a charity shop or to a recycling place, but only really if they're in a condition that you, you would want to receive them. Don't, don't give things away that are not in good shape. So throw away, first pile. The second part is to alter clothes. Now, if you've lost a little weight or maybe gained a bit, you want to just adjust the clothing if it's a special item, then do that. Put that in another pile. Now, I actually do a lot of little stitching myself. You know, I don't go to a tailor. Um, I know a lot of people think it's expensive. And of course, they have a job. They have to work by, by the hour. That Their skill has to be paid for too. But um, if you have a tailor that does good work and is local, this is ideal. Um, because then they can really, they know your body, they can measure you properly and, and make those clothes really have a second uh, lease on life. But if you, if you really, um, if you have a jacket, for example, that you didn't pay very much for, or maybe you bought it secondhand, try to figure out if it's really worth keeping. And otherwise, you know, alter it if you can, but then maybe put it in the throwaway pile. Next thing you could do, next pile, is the sell pile. Now, there's actually quite a lot of people who like to buy vintage older clothes. And I think that this is a definite uh, opportunity. There's eBay, of course, and um, you can even do a car boot sale. Well, it's in the UK. They call them car boot sales or garage sales in the United States, where you you know basically put your clothes on a little hanger and um, people will fall in love with them. And so sell your clothes. There's lots of places. Um, there's a place called Free Cycle too, which is online where you can give things away free. But if you want to sell, that's an option. Put that things in a pile. Also, there are consignment shops. You know places that deal with um, secondhand clothing and I've, I've done this in my life not recently but I don't know um, what's in your town or city but um, consignment shops are another option another option the, the, the fourth part is to pass on now pass on the clothes that that has special meaning to you and are in good condition um, and I would say this is don't give to your friends and family things that you wouldn't wear you know the sweaters that are starting to fade a bit or buttons are missing and just have respect for people as you give them and pass them on of course if there's people that um, don't um, mind that uh, I can think of homeless charities and places that really just would like some warmth in the winter and uh, you know I, I mean I know there's a whole spectrum of, uh, of, of passing on but if you have clothes that don't fit or you don't wear anymore that's an opportunity for you and um, please someone else with your with something that was important to you when you bought it and the fifth thing is to store store things if you really can't decide and you've got a beautiful leather jacket or a coat that's something that you know you know you might need or want one day just store it but of course um, and of course you know the, the, the dresses that you wore to special events and maybe you're a wedding dress keeper <laughs> um, you know put them in a safe place with with mothballs but beware that that creates an odor too that's a challenge but keep them safe and um, and make sure you change those mothballs every year or so uh, just you know if you're storing just be thoughtful of preserving them so that's the fifth um, box that or pile of that you can do with your with your uh, clothing now once you've done this um, war, uh, war makeover in your wardrobe it's time to see where the gaps might be and in Penelope's article, she gives uh, a list of things that um, she thinks every woman should have. And I swear, every time I read one of these lists, um, I go, um, this list could be you know, repeated by 10 different people and have 10 different items. But here's Penelope's, and I, I think for me, it works, or at least most of it does work. First thing is a jacket or blazer something that fits your body type. And um, for me, I, I'm a pear shaped and so I have to wear a jacket or have to. It looks nice if I wear a jacket that's got a little bit of a waist. So um, I've got one jacket in particular that I adore and I, I don't know, I'll be wearing it forever I think because it's just the right shape. And so if you've got a nice jacket or blazer, they can go a long way. Next thing is um, a pair of, of really nice pants that fit you perfectly. Uh, black is my favorite color, of course, for anything below the waist. And, um, you know, make sure that they're a nice fit and that they're straight. You know, I don't mean um, a legging. Leggings are totally cool, but um, one that are more of a dress pant, something that um, you could wear anywhere. But the most important thing is fit. Next thing is a fitted cotton shirt. Now this means a shirt that you can either tuck in or you could wear, you know, and outside your your, your skirt or pants and have a bit of shape. Um, I don't know about in the States these days, but in Switzerland, um, the, the, the shirts all have a dart 
uh, down the front of the, the front of them. So that's a nice shaping uh, tool. Um, a polo neck sweater. I, I love polo neck sweaters, so I have a few of those. A pair of low, low uh, no heel court shoes. This is something that, that Penelope thinks every woman should have, along with a straight cut um, skirt, something that doesn't have to be a pencil skirt, but just a straight, nice fitting skirt uh, that you could just pull on, you know, wear with any top. That's a nice uh, option. Again, mine is black. And then those are just her basics. Everything else is extra, you know, colored t-shirts, shawls, scarves, fun accessories. That's all for you. That's your personality. Then there's some must have, not must not have items that she lists, and those are things like anything that's five years old, or or something that's if it's classic that would be cool. But you know, as they get older, just let things go. Uh, anything trendy. Now I kind of disagree with Penelope on this one because I think some of the trendy stuff now is very cool. And um, if you've got a kind of bohemian nature, you like things with interesting patterns or shapes, some of the um, the recycled or upcycled stuff, they call it, is very intriguing to me. So trendy for me has, uh, is, a you know, there's an open boundary there. And of course, anything that doesn't fit, anything that doesn't um, make you look good or feel good, that's the important thing. Anything that's not comfortable, let it go. So that's Penelope's um, uh, suggestions on uh, making, uh, giving your wardrobe a makeover. I don't know how much that, that you found useful, but um, read the article. There's a lot of cool detail. And of course, leave your comments. Let us know what you think, what you've done to keep your clothing uh, up to date and um, your possessions maybe at a, at a minimum, if that's a priority for you. All right, so that's my, my topic for today. I hope you found it interesting. Leave your comments, as I've said, about anything to do with fashion or your, your wardrobe makeover. And I have a question for you, which is basically, have you ever done a wardrobe makeover? What was the experience like? How emotional was it? <laughs> Did you find it was something that you uh, do regularly or that you want to do again? So have you done a, make a, a wardrobe makeover? I look forward to reading your comments, everyone. Please leave them in the section below. Have a really fabulous Sunday. I hope it's a great day for you, and I'll see you all back here tomorrow on Mornings with 60 and Me. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.